Hey! Glad you made it back. Glad you didn't get lost. Get stuck in the bathroom. Um, big idea. So describing location and distributions. Two big ideas here. Okay, number one. Uh, standardized values. Now again, my class, I'm having, I'm suggesting that you guys write this all, this box in a separate notebook. So that way, because again, you writing it down actually has some way of wiring the brain, as studies have shown. Just saying, that's what I expect you guys to do. So when we get back together, I expect you guys to be able to hold up a notebook or a binder and go, hey, here we are. So standardized values, otherwise known as Z-scores. Now what they end up doing is, What's standardizing something is making sure that it works the same way all the time. So if you have standardized values, then you can compare how far above and below your mean everything is. How many standard deviations above and below the mean is. So this is how you can compare, for example, um, you know, one test to another. How much better did you do than everybody who took the test? Okay, the chapter two test, you might get, let's say you got a 95 on the chapter first test and you got a 90 on the second test, well, it sounds like you did a worse. Well, and you kind of did. However, if your z-score for the first test was 1.2 and your z-score for the second test was 2, even though you got a worse score, you're doing better than most, you're doing it better than um, in comparison to the rest of your classmates. So it's that type of thing. We'll talk a lot about that as we go. So z-scores, again, z is equal to value minus your mean divided by the standard deviation. And the way that you describe this is you're going to have some sort of context. And I'm just going to write in blank context is your z-score. And you're going to say z standard deviations above or below the mean. Okay. We'll do some examples down here in a little bit. Big idea number two. given any list of numbers. If we add or subtract any value, the number two, each value, what changes? And what stays the same? Shape and variability. The same as again, remember you're just picking up and moving around. And what's left? Standard deviation. And we'll call it center, sorry. Shifts up, down by the value. We divide or multiply. Um, oh, subtract, not a number. This is the number a. So multiply, divide. This is why you should always look at your notes before you go through and teach stuff. And I did, I just misread it. So by a number, and we're going to call this number b, the shape stays the same. And then your center and filler variability. Bill it T is either multiply or divided by B. These concepts here are going to be the types of things that you will see in a multiple choice test question. Okay. And they'll just say, you know, and they'll talk through it and it'll be kind of a hypothetical thing, but you're going to have to be able to reason your way through some of this. Okay. Well, this is why it's. One of the big ideas.
All right, so as usual, pause this. We're going to run through the check your, for, check, your for, ugh, check your understanding problem, and then we'll come back and do it together. All right, hey. I hope that went well for you. All right, so we've got Nobles Amusement Park, family friendly in entertainment venue. Nobles does not charge for general admission or parking, but it does charge for each ride they take. Figure shows a dot plot of the cost for 22 each rides. In a recent year, along with summary statistics, there's summary statistics, there it is. So it looks like this is skewed to the right. We've got this outlier of $3 for one of the rides. Most of the rides kind of fall in this 125 to 175 range. Pardon me. So suppose you convert the cost of the rides from dollars to cents. Describe the shape, mean, and standard deviations of each of the rides' costs in cents. Well, okay, so what are we doing? When you're converting things to money, you're asking, am, am I adding it? Or am I multiplying it? Adding or subtracting, it's the same thing. Multiplying and dividing. Well, we're going to have to multiply it by 100. Okay, so if it's multiplying by 100, we're going to fall into this group here. So the shape is going to be the same. Your mean, which was $1.70 and 5 cents, is going to be multiplied by 100. Why 100? Because that's what we're multiplying all the prices by. We're changing it from dollars to cents. So we're multiplying by 100. So that means I've got 1.705 times 100. So your answer should be 170 and a half cents. And your variability, standard deviation, that is also going to be multiplied by 100. So our standard deviation over here, about 45 cents. So our new standard deviation is going to be 44.7 cents. Ta-da! Why is that important? Well, I mean, depending upon how you're arguing things, I mean, you may be doing it in terms of dollars, you may be doing it in terms of cents. It's just good to know how it works. Uh, managers decide to increase the cost of each ride by 25 cents. So how is this going to do? Shape. Well, it's going to stay the same. Have you noticed something that the shape doesn't change? Your mean is going to be, what's going to go up? It's going to be shifted up by 25 cents. So that means I'm going to take my 170.5 cents plus 20. Five cents, and we get one hundred ninety-five point five cents. Standard deviation. What's going to happen there? Nothing. Because again, you're just you're picking up everything and you're just moving it. You're not changing the the, the relationship. If you go back to that first page, oops, where to go? Second page. I'm sorry. Notice from here to here, okay? We just basically picked up these scores and moved them down 80 cents. And when we moved them down, boom, there we go, all right? Now, th the range is the same. We're not changing anything there, okay? So standard deviation is the same. Now suppose you converted the increased cost from question two into z-scores. What would the shape, the mean, the standard deviations happen to this distribution? Well, your mean, well, your shape, first of all, is going to be the same, right? What's your mean going to be? Turn back a page. We said at the bottom of page two. The mean is always zero. Your standard deviation, then, is going to be one. Always, 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 always. Okay? That's always going to be. So, all standard distributions have a mean of zero and a standard def deviation of one. That's the whole point. And we're going to talk more about that as we go. Hope that all makes sense. Obviously,